Uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Speaker, I wish to address a few issues on the primary objection that has been raised before this House this morning. Mr. Speaker, there are two issues. The twin issues, one, Mr. Speaker, touch on the propriety of these proceedings and whether or not the proceedings before the Assembly, Mr. Speaker, under Article 181 and Section 33 of the County Government Act, my Lord, Mr. Speaker, are a continuum. In law, Mr. Speaker, the process that defines the commencement of impeachment proceedings, Mr. Speaker, and it is instructive to note, has now been settled in terms of what constitutes a process. And Mr. Speaker, the Majority Leader, Mr. Uh, Senator Aaron Chiriot, has referred to two decisions that have informed prior impeachments in this House, the impeachment of Ferdinand Waititu and the impeachment of the then Governor of Nairobi, Mike Sonko. Uh, both, uh, Mr. Speaker, were my clients at some point, have therefore had the advantage of litigating on impeachment. But Mr. Speaker, I will proceed to the first objection. Mr. Speaker, the proceedings of this House are cushioned from any other processes. And Mr. Speaker, Order, Senator Tabitha. the proceedings of this House are cushioned from any other processes. When this court sits to hear impeachment, impeachment proceedings, we sit as a court. And Mr. Speaker, because all the issues will be canvassed here, what was raised by the counsel for the governor as preliminary objections do not strictly in law qualify as preliminary objections because the House has been asked to look at various exhibits and to see various vid videos. That is the province of evidence, Mr. Speaker. On that account alone, the preliminary objections will collapse because there are two interpretations of the whole number in the Nkadude case, Mr. Speaker, and in other decisions, this, this Senate would have to sit and consider all the submissions from parties to arrive at a proper finding as a jury at the end of this process and when witnesses are called. The magical number, Mr. Speaker, of 31 and 32, 31.3, that uh, the whip, has, the whip uh, Kalwale was referring to as res ipsa locita, Mr. Speaker, is not quite res ipsa locita. The facts are not obvious because the interpretation and the tilting of all numbers between 31 and 32 are matters of evidence and presentations before this house. And that we have seen from the submissions by the county assembly and from the, uh, the other side. Mr. Speaker, I've had the advantage, and I must say this, of litigating the question of continuum in the Wambora case, the case of Marete, uh, Kauma, and Honorable Nyaga Wambora, which was civil Supreme Court petition number 32 of 2014, where the court, in summary, in dealing with Hassan Joe, Said Shabal, and other uh, uh, decisions, my lord, Raila Odinga, and in citing the National Assembly Privileges and Immunities Act, section 12, my lord, uh, Mr. Speaker, insulate this house from any contempt proceedings, number one. But number two, Mr. Speaker, it also insulates this House and other institutions from any claim of interference by other institutions. The Supreme Court, Mr. Speaker, in that matter, defining the independence of institutions as a primacy that must be considered, and the Supreme Court holding our petition in 2014 on the basis, Mr. Speaker, that a House this house cannot be injuncted by a court. The orders issued by Judge Sergon, Mr. Speaker, cannot therefore stop the proceedings of this house. Mr. Speaker. Just one minute. Mr. Speaker, just to note that a, a dark cloud hangs over the head of the governor over the allegations that have been made. What other place would the governor have 
to clear the allegations made against him other than in this house. I think this is the opportunity for the governor and for the county assembly and the people of Kericho to know whether or not the governor is guilty or innocent of the wrongdoings that have been leveled against him. Mr. Speaker, allow this Senate to make a decision on this matter by going through a substantive hearing of all these allegations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Murango. Asante sana, Mr. Speaker. Na kwanza ni kushukuru kwa sababu ya kusikiza ombi la kiongozi wa wengi, kiongozi cheriot, kuwa na wakilishu wandi ya paeza kusikia, kusikiza kwa sababu mimi pia nilikuwa mwakilishu wandi. Na ni vizuri pia waone kwa sababu kesho watakuwa watu na maybe watakuwa hapa pia. Mustaiki speaker, katika kanoni zetu za kundumu, eh, ambayo nyongeza ya tatu, ambayo inapeana mashati ya utaratimbu wa kusikiriza na kuamua masaka ya kumondoa ngavana mamulakani. Katika kanuni ya kundumu, the manini, tukienda katika kuminambili. Inasema, hiyo mashati yote ambayo imepeanwa, ikizingatiwa, ngavana atasikizwa na ushaindi utakapo anza utaendelea handi seneti itakapo hitimisha kusikiriza swala hilo. Mustaiki speaker, tusha anza kusikiriza njambo hili na kanuni zetu za kudumu zinasema ya kwamba inapo anza tunafaa kuenda mpaka mwisho. Kwa hivyo nadhani seneti kwa sahi haiwezi kuangalia namba ilikuwa na mnagani tutaangalia makosa ambao italetwa hapa, tutasikiza pande zote mbili, halafu mwishoe, tutakuja sasa kuamua, tutakapo kuwa tumesikiza kila kitu. Kwa hivyo kwa maali utatuerekeza mustake speaker, nadhani ni vizuri, maseneto wapewe na fasi kuamua jambo hilo, kwa sababu kulingana venye nimesikiriza kesi kulingana na wakili wangavana, ni kusama kwamba wanakualika kufanya uamuzi lakini sidhani kwamba uamuzi unaezafanyiwa na speaker peke yake katika muda huu lakini maseneta wote wanafaa kuja wasikize halafu waweze kuamua asante mustaki speaker senator osotsi thank you mr speaker mr speaker indeed listening to my colleagues we are confronted uh, with a very important decision to make on how we are going to dispense with a preliminary objection uh, because the matters raised in the preliminary objections are very weighty from both sides. And um, I want to agree with the senators who have said that uh, Rule 30 does not apply uh, in this case. It is uh, the senators to make a determination. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to dissuade you from applying Rule 30, and instead let the senators exercise their constitutional right to determine whether the PO stands or not. And um, looking at the numbers, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I want to uh, pick from Senator Muma, who talked about the numbers of women in the, in the county assembly. I think we would need to get some wisdom or a communication from IBC because from my experience, I know IBC has been doing rounding off. They round off to the next human being. So when we talk about 31 point, when we talk about uh, 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 31.3, I think the next number is 32. That is what IBC has been doing. So I think we need to look at this matter very critically and uh, decide through a vote on how we want to proceed. And if the decision is uh, in support of the governor's preliminary objection, Mr. Speaker, then the whole matter collapses. And that's the position of the law because it will not make any sense for us to uh, proceed with a matter of this nature if the PO collapses, if the PO uh, succeeds. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to dissuade you from applying rule number 30, but allow the members to make a determination through a vote. Senator Chute. Uh, Honorable Speaker, 
I am not a lawyer. I, I mean, uh, I've been in business for many years. And if you look at what is happening in uh, business circles, you'll find that uh, a shopkeeper writes 999, price of 999. Why are they, are they doing this? It's because they want to attract a customer. The price can be 1,000, but he wants to attract a customer, and he puts 999. Referring you to Section 33 of the County Government Act, it clearly says minimum of two-thirds. Honorable Speaker, the County Assembly of Kericho should go back and get that to two people, 32 Senate, uh, uh, members of uh, County Assembly, and come back to the Senate. We, <laughs> Honorable Speaker, you know, we are not here to sacrifice the governor of Kericho. We need to protect each and every person. If that person was brought here in a way that the Constitution has made it very clear that anything that can, uh, is less than two-thirds is not acceptable. So, Honorable Speaker, 31 is not 32. 31 is 31. If they, can, if they can bring the governor here with 32 votes, I'll say, yes, that's acceptable. So let them do, let them do their homework, Missouri, and come back with 32 votes, and that is how we'll prosecute this case. Thank you very much. Senator Mazayo. Minority Leader. Asante, Mr. Hiki Speaker. Mr. Hiki Speaker, jambo la kwanza kwa hivi sasa ni kwamba watu wa kilicho wanaketi wakijua kwamba governor wao ama kesi yao hivi sasa iko ndani ya senate. Bwana speaker hii hoja ambayo iko mbele yetu ya aidha uweza kusimamisha uh, kusikiza kesi hii ya uh, uh, mstahiki gabana ama uweza kuimaliza wakati huu iko mbele ya Senate. Bwana Speaker tumekuwa na mifano tofauti tofauti ambayo imekuwa hapa ndani ya, ya bunge la Senate. Nikikumbuka kulikuwa na kesi ya mheshimiwa Sonko aliyekuwa gavana wa Nairobi. Kitu kama hicho hichi kilitendeka lakini Senate iliamua kwamba itasikiza kesi yote kwa ujumla alafu mwisho ndio itaamua nataka tuchukue mkondo huo huo ambao liwekwa wakati ule na bunge hili hili nyumba ni hii hii masenators wamegeuka wengine sio aliyokuweko lakini wale ambao wako hivi sasa wanaweza kufanya kama vile ambavyo tunasema kule nyumbani ya kwamba maji hufata mkondo kwa hiyo hivi sasa tuko na tuko na uh, mkondo ambao tuliuweka ndani ya bunge la senate ya kwamba kitendo kama hichi kitendeka alafu tukileta wakileta kama hiyo preliminary objection wacha iwe moja wapo ya zile sababu ambazo tutasikiza hii uh, uh, motion ambayo iko mbele yetu hivi sasa kwa hiyo bwana speaker nataka kusema tu ya kwamba turuhusu ya kwamba kesi hii ambayo iko mbele yetu iweze kuendelea tuweke hii preliminary objection kando kidogo ili tuweze kuichukua pamoja na hizi zingine kama vile tulifanya mfano wa mheshimiwa Sonko Asante bwana speaker Senator Mutinda Tabeta uh, thank you Mr Speaker and I want to agree with colleagues on the point that uh, parliament is independent and so cannot be injected. That one, we all do agree. Mr. Speaker, the discussion on table on in-house in, in today is the arithmetic discussion. An arithmetic discussion of 31.3. 
Mr. Speaker, 31.3, as a student of mathematics, less 47 is 15.7. At this point, Mr. Speaker, does it mean that 15.7 MCAs of Kericho did not vote on this motion of impeachment, but then 31.3 did vote? Mr. Speaker, it's very clear we cannot have an arithmetic in terms of a human being. And it's so very clear, Mr. Speaker, that 31 MCAs did vote to impeach the governor, and 16 did not vote, which equivalents that number to 47. A very straightforward situation, Mr. Speaker, if 23 senators vote to impeach a governor, 23 vote not to impeach, and one abstains, then the governor is not impeached. What is clear, Mr. Speaker, is that the decision on this PO is a decision by the senators. Even when we shall be voting for the next big, as big assignment on Thursday, Mr. Speaker, two-third is equivalent to 44.6. The required number is not 44, but 45. In the event... Senator Nduati. Senator Nduati. Veronica. Uh, Honorable Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to contribute to the issues at hand. Uh, the preliminary points that have been raised and application. At the very onset, Mr. Speaker, I would encourage you not to take the bait of having to determine What happened? Is your time up? Uh, no, no, no. I've not even spoken okay, for 20 proceed, seconds. Proceed then. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I was saying that I would uh, persuade you not to take the bait of having to determine these preliminary points or applications. For two reasons, Mr. Speaker. They raise such fundamental and weighty points of law, Mr. Speaker, and some have, of course, raised uh, issues of fact, whether service was effected or not effected. Mr. Speaker, if you were to determine these issues, it would bring to a determination of the entire impeachment proceeding. That means you would have abrogated yourself the function of what the Senate is supposed to be doing. Consequently, you should bring these points to a vote by the House, Mr. Speaker, and by the honorable members of Senate. Two, Mr. Speaker, there was an application on the issue of a protection of a witness, a key witness in these proceedings, Mr. Speaker. It's my very considered uh, opinion, Mr. Speaker, that that protection should be afforded to a witness who feels vulnerable, Mr. Speaker, because of the nature of the offenses that have been uh, brought forth, Mr. Speaker. But while giving that protection to this witness, Mr. Speaker, there must be a balance as to how that protection is given. For instance, Mr. Speaker, and if you are guided by the Witness Protection Act, Mr. Speaker, we could take off the proceedings from camera with respect to that uh, witness, but ensure that uh, senators have an opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to hear the kind of allegation so that you balance between uh, the witness not being hidden away from the accused uh, governor, Mr. Speaker, and the senators who are supposed to be judges, but you also ensure that the witness is not exposed to an extent that uh, reputational damage would appear or would occur, Mr. Speaker, in the event that uh, the evidence she's adducing is, is true, and whether that evidence is true or not, will be determined after the witness has been heard. So we should balance the two, Mr. Speaker, but ensure that the witness is protected because of the nature of the offenses, Mr. Speaker. With those remarks, Mr. Speaker, I would urge you to allow the senators to vote on this. I will not... Senator Munihaji, fuck. Uh, Asante mwishima speaker kukulipa fursa hii. Kimsingi ni kwamba mawakili wa gavana wanataka maswala haya ya muliwe kabla ya kusikizwa kwa mashitaka ambayo ya hapa na assembly ya kericho. 
Mheshimiwa Speaker tukiangalia uh, bunge la Senate linapokaa kuangalia masuala ya impeachment ni kama mahakama na katiba yetu inasema katika kifungu cha 159 ina kwamba uh, inapo mahakama zinapokaa haki ya muliwe bila ya kuzingatia masuala magumu ya ki procedure na vile vile pia kiteknikali uh, if i may read it in english uh, mr speaker is that justice shall be administered senator, without undue uh, senator uh, senator faki uh, yes. choose the language you wish no, to for the benefit of the ama, samani mwish speaker you started in kiswahili proceed in kiswahili sa samani mwish speaker kwa hivyo na mwish speaker swala lililoko mbele ya bunge la seneti ni kwamba Seneti iamue masuala ambayo yameletwa yamefikishwa mbele yake bila ya kuzangatia mambo ya ya kiteknikali kwa sababu tunapozingatia mambo ya kiteknikali tutapoteza ile fursa ya kuweza kutenda haki ya kimsingi jambo la pili mheshimiwa speaker ni kwamba bunge la senate linapiga kura kutokana na masuala ya delegation kwa hivyo hili ni swala ambalo linaathiri counties na kwa masuala yote yanayoathiri counties uamuzi huwa ni kwa ni wa kupiga kura wa zile eh, delegation 47 ambazo ziko katika bunge hili. Kwa hivyo mheshimiwa speaker swala la ku wewe kukata kwamba swala hili halikutimizwa ama swala la quorum halikutimia katika bunge la Kericho na bunge la county ya Kericho mheshimiwa speaker hapo utakuwa umekiuka katiba na vile vile pia umekiuka kanuni zetu za bunge hili ambapo zinasema kwa masuala ya uamuzi iwe ni kwa sababu ni masuala ya delegations ambazo ziko katika bunge hili. Asante sana mheshimiwa speaker. Senator Karoche Tabitha. Thank, thank you Mr. Speaker. Sir for giving me also the opportunity. And it's true I agree with my other senators there is an issue when it comes to the, the law, that is section 33 of uh, county government acts, to really verify and know whether we, the numbers that, uh, said, I mean the MCAs that uh, approved this motion, whether they met the threshold. But uh, I'm lucky because I happen to have, exp I mean, uh, co continue with my maths where you, re you reach a point where Months and science go together. So, when it comes now to 31.3, the science math says there is no half person, so it should have been 32. The point three is always becomes a whole person, which it should be 32. But now the other big question is, if uh, this motion is returned back to the county assembly, how sure are we that it will not come back within a, a, a week? So I think we are now again uh, not uh, very sure whether we are going to save uh, or hurt the people that brought this motion here. But it is true, we've not met the threshold. It should have been 32, not 31. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Senator Sifuna. Uh, Senator Eddy, certainly you cannot rise on a point of order. There is no senator speaking. Senator Lominen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, as I've listened to uh, uh, the councils from the both sides, Chair, we have a heavy duty to do in this uh, uh, Senate House, and we need time. Uh, Chair, if you see the voluminous books that are with us, there are many, there are many contents that we have to listen before we make a, we make a ruling. Chair, I will want to urge this House and you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, to give us an opportunity as senators or judges to make a, 
a, a ruling of, of this issue of appeal by making a vote. And then we continue from there, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, sir. Senator Wamatenga. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, indeed, uh, we are invited as senators to do justice to a matter brought before us. But even before we do that, Mr. Speaker, it is our duty and responsibility as the whole country and the whole world watches to ensure that we do justice to matters that are come, come before us. Mr. Speaker, sir, it has been cited that decisions have been made and precedents have been set. But that notwithstanding, Mr. Speaker, it is also imperative that we interrogate that under which condition those decisions and precedents were set. Mr. Speaker, sir, as an engineer, I know that lounging numbers to the nearest is a common practice. However, Mr. Speaker, sir, we are invited in this matter not to look at the case before scientifically, but to look, to look at it as is required using uh, the jurisprudence, uh, prudence, jurisprudence that have been set before. Mr. Speaker, 31.3 cannot meet the threshold. And therefore, I think it is imperative that we as senators move a motion and decide on this matter, determine this matter, even before we go into full hearing, because that is the responsibility that we have, and it is what people expect of us, and it is what we must do as senators. Mr. Speaker, the role of these senators sitting here, when they come and sit as juries, we must make a decision whether the prerequisite uh, preliminaries have been met. If they are not been met, Mr. Speaker, then we must return matter to the sender so that they can meet the threshold and we can be able to be sitting in a matter that is supposed to be sat for by this House. Mr. Speaker, sir, I submit. Senator Eddy. Senator Eddy. Uh, I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what we're invited to do uh, in this house on two substantive uh, POs, Mr. Speaker. One, I cannot belabor, Mr. Speaker. We cannot be gagged by addition of court from doing our job. So I think that one we are in tandem, Mr. Speaker. On this issue of mathematics, Mr. Speaker, you are invited to make a decision which I think that it is the house that should make. One is a practical a question and the other one is a mathematical question. Practically, Mr. Speaker, you cannot have a fraction of human beings reduced to the lower number. And mathematically, Mr. Speaker, I think that it is a question that probably would have needed a judicial review even long before it came to this place, Mr. Speaker. Because constitutionally, this question of two-thirds has never confronted the country. And Mr. Speaker, the only time that we see it, and especially from the cases that has been presented here, is the case for, for Tana River, Mr. Speaker. So as a house, I think it behooves us to go with the larger question of what has been determined in court. And what has been determined in court as per now, without a judicial review, is the case for Tana River, which then can be the only legal basis and legal framework that then we can be able to use to question this practicality of numbers. But that said, Mr. Speaker, I wanted to urge the House that because this is a very serious issue, Mr. Speaker, and the people of Kenya would want to be heard, perhaps the determination of these two POs should be, should be done with the other substantive issues that have been brought in the House so that senators have got a chance to make uh, observations at the end of this entire process so that those preliminaries will form part of the conversations and, uh, as we go through the charges and this matter be heard and then we make a determination at the end, Mr. Speaker, because if we don't, then you'll be invited to a very dangerous path, Mr. Speaker, whereby Senator Oroba. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to add my voice about the victim protection, Mr. Speaker. 
in the Victim Protection Act, Section 8, it says that any victim has a right for privacy and protection. And therefore, because the proceedings here will be broadcasted, Mr. Speaker, I believe we have no choice but to follow the law and ensure that Section 8, Section 10, and Section 11, particularly on the issue of disclosing the identity of the victim, are taken care of. Mr. Speaker, on the matter of uh, the two-third threshold, Mr. Speaker, this is a house of procedure. We are guided by procedure, and we have our standing order. Our standing order says on the procedure for removal of a governor, Within seven days after receiving notice of a resolution from the Speaker of the County Assembly supporting the removal of a governor, person to Article 181, then the proceedings begin. Mr. Speaker, in that sense, we are, why are we even debating this? There is no opportunity in our standing order where we are told, go back to the County Assembly and check if the threshold was met and check if the allegations were actually substituted for us we are, we are, we are quasi-judicial uh, uh, process. They have reached here. As long as we have the notice of resolution from the speaker, from the county assembly, our work is to proceed. And for those who feel that the threshold was not met, Mr. Speaker, they can go to court and proceed with that argument there. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Asige. Thank you, Speaker. I have two observations to make. It's my understanding that the Kericho, Kericho um, County Assembly co consists of 47 members, and Article se Section 33 of CGA requires two-thirds of the votes uh, are needed to support a, an impeachment motion, which means that the County Assembly needed 31.3 votes. And further, if we use the Nkaduda versus County Assembly of Tana River case, we can infer, because of jurisprudence, that a natural person cannot be fragmented into a fraction. And therefore, the logical thing to do, of course, would be to round off the decimal to the nearest round number. And the nearest round number in this case is 31. Speaker, we are here as a quasi-judicial hearing. And I see us, of course, as judges, very, very um, strongly so in this case. And Speaker, I also see us akin to scientists um, who have been given the mandate to deal with this case with precision. This is a laboratory, Mr. Speaker, and we are all scientists, and we have been called to make a very fine cut in this, uh, with these POs. Speaker, science has laws. There is the law of gravity, law of motion, the law of um, the Mendel's law, the Megan law, several laws, Mr. Speaker, and those are absolute. They cannot be moved. They cannot be um, uh, wished away. Similarly, Speaker, the High Court has ruled through this jurisprudence that um, that you should uh, uh, um, calculate to the nearest round number, and that, Mr. Speaker, is law. It's, it's through a court of law, and I think that we should continue in that way. 31 has been met in terms of votes, and therefore we should, we should um, listen to this case further and uh, listen to the substantive issues therein. Speaker, also, you have been invited by the Governor's Council to mirror the decision of your counterpart in the National Assembly. I feel that is out of order, Speaker. You are not a conveyor belt. You are not somebody who regurgitates what the Speaker of the National Assembly does or says. You are not a parrot of the National Assembly Speaker. And therefore, being invited to mirror a decision that... Senator Seki. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I also stand to put my voice on this matter. Honorable Speaker, I want to believe that um, the county assembly have pronounced themselves, they have presented themselves. The governor uh, panel has also presented themselves. And now it is the Senate now to determine whether to listen to the PO to uh, pro uh, pro uh, uh, proceed with this matter. But I want to assure and uh, believe that uh, this matter will be determined in whichever case, Honorable Speaker. Either we have presented ourselves, we have pronounced ourselves, we have determined ourselves before this case, or even when we uh, uh, determine this case when we are finishing, uh, to, uh, we listen this case towards the end. I want to believe uh, that um, 
this is the right time that we need to hear both sides, the, the county assembly and the governor, uh, the, the governor team, so that at the end of it all, everything will determine because we will see if true the county assembly had the, the threshold or, or not, or the governor has issues that has been accused to, it is going to be determined towards the end. So, uh, Honorable Speaker, I believe that this is a time when we need to hear this case. We need to hear because the process is, has started and uh, there is no way we can stop this process. So, uh, Honorable Speaker, I want to support that we proceed with the matter. Thank you very much. Senator Akenye Betros. Honorable Speaker, I thank you for giving me the opportunity. Honorable Speaker, uh, the issue that I want to talk to is the issue of the threshold. Honorable Speaker, you can't round off human beings. And uh, if, uh, if a threshold has to be determined, Honorable Speaker, and it has been stated, to me, Honorable Speaker, there is no way around it. We must look at uh, the issue of uh, threshold and it must be determined, Honorable Speaker, because we cannot set a precedent uh, that is otherwise. Honorable Speaker, uh, on the PO, if it has to be determined, it is a matter that does not concern counties. And so, Honorable Speaker, I stand guided, but I think uh, all the 67 uh, senators uh, stand uh, to determine, uh, to vote on that. Otherwise, Honorable Speaker, on the issue of threshold, Honorable Speaker, I want to support that the threshold must be met from the word go. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Senator Metro. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. I don't want to address what my colleagues have said. I want to agree that uh, on the first PO, it falls by the way because uh, precedences have been set that Parliament cannot be injected on the course of its work. Uh, but Honorable Speaker, you've been invited to make a very critical decision and uh, on the, without speaking on whether the threshold was that one or that two, both parties have come with uh, arguments and counter arguments. Why they actually think that that one would be the threshold, why they think that that two would be the threshold. Authorities have been cited, especially in the Tana River case, the County Assembly, or uh, Speaker and Kaduda versus the County Assembly, on the number as to at what point you should be able to truncate uh, uh, the numbers, and they actually believe that it should be rounded off to the nearest hole. The defense of the, go of the governor through um, uh, their counsel, Katwa Kigen, they actually feel that uh, even at the very beginning of the inception of this uh, County Assembly, there had been set a precedence that, that it would be the number. So, Honorable Speaker, you've been invited to make this particular decision, and this is a weighty decision because if you are to allow this PO, then this impeachment proceeding will fall uh, as at now. We shall not have, the jury will not have had an opportunity to make a decision on this particular matter. It is a very serious invitation, and uh, I would want to dissuade you, Honorable Speaker, from allowing or agreeing to fall prey to rule 30 of, uh, of, of the rules of procedure that you make the, this decision on the uh, uh, preliminary objection. Please, Honorable Speaker, allow the 47 delegations to make this decision on whether, well, it could be 67 or 47, whatever would be the case, Honorable Speaker, if it, it touches on the counties, Honorable Speaker, but allow senators who are the jury, who are the judges on this particular uh, matter, to make this decision. Honorable Speaker, for you on this matter, you are an umpire. You have no dog in this fight. Yours is to just um, umpire... Now, uh, honorable senators, we need to make focus. I may take your seat, uh, Professor Minority Leader and Senator Kajwan. I've had you, and uh, nothing new seems to be coming out uh, at, at this juncture. And therefore, for us to make uh, progress, you'll allow me to use standing order number one to suspend the sitting for 15 minutes so that we resume at 3.30 for me to go consider the interventions you've made and uh, give a way forward on how we are going to dispense with this matter. Because remember, honorable senators, 
if in the event that we proceed with this hearing, we have to start from the beginning. The hearing hasn't started yet. We are merely dealing with preliminary matters, and therefore time is of the essence. So kindly, honorable senators, I will proceed now to suspend the sitting for 15 minutes, and we shall resume at uh, 3.30. Well, the question of uh, the two-thirds, whether the, that is the threshold was reached or not, uh, still remains unresolved. Uh, the Speaker of the Senate, Honorable Amazon Jeff Akingi, has suspended uh, this sitting for 15 minutes, and uh, the House will be resuming at 15.30, indicating that uh, he needs to consider the deliberations.